SoCap for it Report, Rich Estrella, along with my partner Bob Gibson. Happy you joined us. Randy Rosenman will be in here with some city section stuff. And man, looking forward to that. City sections. Oh, well, boy. you know what? Some people thought it imploded, but it didn't. Bob. No, actually, it got more interesting, That's right? Right. Now, we know Narbonne is out now and, and out for a while. And uh, things got really interesting. In Whenever the city section. there's chaos, there's opportunity. And there's a lot uh, of exactly opportunity right. right now in the city section. We'll be talking about that with Randy a little bit but uh Bob it's playoff time I know they've it. got the pairings out everybody's fired up people complaining some schools are traveling 10,000 miles just to go and that's just one way to play their first round game Bob but that's what we like about the southern section format we see games we would never see otherwise Bob. I love it it's the year it's the time of year where chaos yes, indeed. reigns we have a one and nine team that made the playoffs El Toro you have no business in the playoffs but you're there, aren't you? So you got a shot at it, just right like on. everybody else. All right, we're going to take a look real quick. This is the last time you're going to see any of these rankings or anything for the next four or five weeks, maybe even six weeks. Who knows? Maybe the end today. Let's get to it. Have a look at the No Love Club right now. It's Corona Del Mar, Bob, your uh, team that you picked that would be a No Love Club winner is right now in the top spot. They're 10-0. and uh, They had a big win this week. Uh, I don't know who they played, but easiest. was it? They didn't play. They played Newport Harbor last week. Right, that was anyways, Harbor last week. They beat. Uh... There you go, Bob. There <laughs> we go. Really we both one. just but let it, was, it go. It, it was, doesn't it, even it, matter. It, believe me, we, I, my mind has been so much on the playoff pairings. I had Colonel Del Mar's in the rearview mirror for now. But 10 and 0 it was the easiest call I made all season long. I see. Colonel Del Mar stomp. Bob, everybody. I see. I see error in your notes right everybody. here, man. I wasn't about to just say it. Be Corona, stupid. Colonel Del Mar is about to go win themselves a D3 championship, and if they would have let them, they'd have been in D1. And, and they, they would have won given, the championship, right, Bob? And they'd right, have Bob? given Bosco and Modern Day a heck of a run there as well. You told me earlier, you told Randy they were going to beat him if they would have got in there, I Ken. I think they have a heck so of a chance. Tell they... everybody what's really on your mind, my friend. Thought... Paramount from the San Diego Bay League, 9-1. They're in the playoffs as well. We'll be talking about them a little bit. Cypress, followed by Culver City. Western with another big win. Uh, Western scored a lot of points this week, yeah, Bob. I think uh, they Western. scored. They, they broke the 100-point barrier. It was like 77-6. to six. Uh, Catella, uh, nine and one. I mean, they're still smoking. Foothill of Santa Ana is like 50 Foothill High School. Bob. I know, right? We got <laughs> we got to let you know this is the Santa Ana version. They're undefeated, of Foothill, which is in Tustin, kind of technically. Then you got Lindora in there. They beat Colony this week, 63 to 27. Sunny Hills, 48 16 over Troy. Alhambra, 59 nothing over are Mark Keppel. Everybody scored a lot of points. I mean, Paramount scored 59 uh, zero over Gar. Cover City, 55 nothing. Over Culver City, as we mentioned, Western, a big 77-6 winner. A lot, man. Of, lot of big Listen, mismatches it's here better to be you know? peaking now. It's better to be oh. smoking now going into the playoffs rather than just kick everybody's tail early and then you kind of peter out at the end. You kind of slow down and it's I done. I, I say it every year. This is the time of year you want to be peaking. This is the time of year you want to be playing your best football. And so if you're doing it right now, uh, and we'll talk about it in the city section, right? There's some teams that are starting to peak right now but uh we'll see everybody everybody's got a shot like you said everybody's record is zero and zero zero right zero all right let's take a look at the pseudo open division it's known as the top 10 of these of this uh just of the area i mean there's no city section schools in there now bob because Southern narbonne's California, gone right? but, narbonne's gone now and right. so you see modern day bosco centennial those are the three they've been there all year long uh a you couple, know a couple of hacks locally that kept narbonne in their top 10 i don't know why randy we randy's didn't. calling everybody lobbying for him we rosenblum didn't. Uh, Mission Viejo, Servite, Jay Sarah, uh, four, five, and six, followed by Amat and Norco, Sierra Cannon, Grace Brethren. Now leave it here for a minute because Bishop Amat had a hell of a season, Bob. They had a great season. They finished nine and one, one misstep at the start of the season. Right. They finally got things going. They humped through the Mission League, and you know what they get? They get modern. They get modern. Round, I know. And we, man. How are you going to sell to me Jay Sarah is the sixth best team in Southern California right now? Take out the fact that Bob, the voters spoke, the pollsters spoke. Look, just like they hired the president, they vote. 
That's what you get. That's what happened. Look, look, look I'm sorry. I, I had high hopes for Jay Sarah coming into this year, but they underachieved this year. Now they're without their star running back, Chris Street, uh, throughout the playoffs. Uh, broken leg, unfortunately, a week ago. Bob, so they don't the, take the that into consideration, though. Jay they Sarah. don't care about that. Boy, they, I mean, you talk about a team that just underachieved this 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 season is Jay Sarah. There, this was a team talking about we have a chance to jump into that Bosco modern day territory this year. Not but even, see, not even close. You bought into the propaganda, Bob. I, I, I That's must what have. Happened. You did. You were touting them I must very have early. Servite the general clearly became the third. The general yeah, came well, in from the, San Antonio, riding in up and down season for the general. And up and down. And he you had know some what? Highlights and he had some time. It may not be over yet. Jay Sarah's second team running backs. Everybody come in and just tear it up. They're now, rested. Now, They're rested. J now, if Jay Sarah, if they had done Jay Sarah the favor and bumped him down to D2, I would have said, you got a chance down to D2. But it, it, it didn't happen. And I, I'm sorry, six and four. You're going to tell me Jay Sarah is better than Bishop Amat right now? I'm Never not buying know. that. I'm not buying that for a second. I think head-to-head, -head, Jay Sarah, Amat, I don't even think that's a game. I think Amat beats Jay Sarah pretty easily right now if, they, if those two got on Let's the field. Let's schedule it, man. Uh, let's, let's do see what's it. up. Hey. Let's do it. I think Amat, I think uh, Steve Haggerty and his kids, they'd be ready to, to run that game back against a good Trinity pop, team like that. Pop that top 10 back up real quick there, if you would, Larry, and we'll just have a look I real fast I think that game would be again. much different than what we saw earlier on in the season. Oh, I think so, too. I think it's hard to beat this. You know, obviously, it's hard to beat right. good teams twice in the same season, a la Modern Day Bosco last year, but it may not be that right. way this year. We'll talk yeah. about that. But real quick, uh, some of the big scores this week. I mean, Modern Day hung 51 on Jay Sarah. You're talking about Bosco 56-10 over Santa Margarita. Corona 77-20 over yes. Roosevelt. Uh, Mission Viejo scored 44 on Tesoro. I mean, on and on, you know, just uh, Norco 70-14 to over Corona. And uh, just goes on and on. Of course, uh, Grace Brethren played an undefeated Camarillo team. And right. what a game that was. That was a nice one to look. So uh, they're able to hang on there to that top 10. We'll see what happens with all these games. All right. Uh, taking a look now at the, uh, at the playoff brackets, Bob, yeah. right? Let's take a look. Take a look real fast. We're going to run through them. We're not going to list every score. We're just going to take a real look at the top four. Uh, in Division two, because uh, we're not going to talk about the Open Division just yet, Sierra Canyon, San Clemente, North Ranch, Cucamonga, Bob, I cannot argue with any of them. Now, let's look at the first round matchups between Long Beach, Poly, and Orange Lutheran. A uh, little interesting there. Orange Lutheran finished fourth in their fifth, actually, in the uh, Trinity League. They were one and four in the league, five and five overall. Pauly was six and oh in the league, seven and three overall. But, yeah, I mean, Orange Lutheran's favorite in this game. Everybody you talk to says Old Lou's gonna, <laughs> gonna upset Pauly. I mean, what's up? O Olu had their moments in the Trinity this year. Look, this is the type of thing where a last place team in the Trinity League could easily win a, a D2 championship. I mean, it could happen. Will it happen? I don't think so. And I, I kind of like Polly in this first round game, I, although we don't really know what Polly is either. I mean, Polly kind of went under the radar this year, but it always happens because they, they just run away in their league. There's nobody that even yeah. comes close in the Moore League to Polly. So we don't really know, but it's, it's an interesting matchup because the two names on there, right? Orange right. Lutheran, a Trinity League uh, team that was a powerhouse a couple of years back. You got Polly, which, of course, has all Listen, the history. It's the Moore League champion I against know. the fifth-place team in the Trinity League. That's all you got to say. <laughs> and, and it's the a coin place team will probably and, and, win and that flip game. flip a coin. Probably win. Flip a coin. Yeah, I could see either of those teams coming out with the win. The other game looking at is Chaminade versus Norco. It's mm -hmm. the very west side of Los Angeles. You got to go all the way to Norco for this game. I don't know, Bob. You know, yeah, it I may like only be matchup. 90 miles, but it's like I, five hours. You I know? really like this matchup, right? I, do too. I mean, this is, I think this is going to be a fun one. Uh, boy, Norco was playing some good. Of course, you know, everybody lost to Centennial yeah, they did. at the end of the year. But they did. Chaminade just feels like that team that's coming on, right? I mean, right. just they kind of have no business, but gosh darn it, the, their head coach over there. Uh, you just they just know what they're doing at Chaminade. I'm telling you, they just they just seem to we'll play see. a little better than what you think a lot of times. I, I like Chaminade in this matchup. It's a crazy matchup for a first round game. Is all I'm saying. It's <laughs> nuts. But hey, that's why they've uh, mixed it up, taken the, the best eight schools out, and mixed everybody else in. All right, Division uh, Three. Now let's take a look uh, at at the the top seeds and take a look at a key game or two. Corona Del Mar, Bob, there you think is. they're going to run away? I want to see that Corona Del Mar Grace Brethren game. That's what everybody's If it happens, to. you got La Habra in this division. Oh. The weak one's Almany. Oh. All the top three can win. Any of the top three, Bob, can win this division. We know how good La Habra is. Excellent we, uh, we know We know they, they play well. I, you know, I give Alamany an outside shot of, uh, of maybe getting there. I don't think so, but I think this really sets up. Of all the divisions, this one I think is the easiest setup of what you're going to see in the final. Corona Del Mar, Grace Brethren, by far the two best teams in this division. 
Uh, they're, I think they're on a crash course to get to that championship game. And I, I do like Cronin Omar. I've liked them all year, but Grace Brothers got a heck Look, of a team too. The one who has the toughest road here is going to be Grace Brothers and La Habra. Mm -hmm. They're going to end up meeting. Oh yeah. So yeah, it I, wouldn't surprise anybody if La Habra got Grace Brothers, right? That wouldn't no, surprise anybody. No, no, wouldn't be surprised at all. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a good game. I'll tell you that. Okay, uh, taking a look at the Her Heritage at Edison. Here's another one. You'll never see this matchup ever anywhere. And it's in the opening round here. Heritage, of course, uh, they were 2-1, uh, 7-3 and one, seven and three in their league. Edison 4-1, 7-3. Uh, what do you get from that? I don't know what to say. I mean, there's two weird teams playing each other, well, Bob. You, you used to see some really strange bus trips back in the day. Teams yeah. going out to... I remember when I was in high school, our, our school had to go way out to Bloomington to play. And, you know, it felt like a 10-hour bus ride just to get out to Riverside. But the CIF Southern Section has done a better job of trying to get closer geographic matchups for teams. But here's one. Heritage and Edison, right, you're right. You would never see never this see matchup. It. So how much fun is that to see two schools that have probably never played one another and may never play one another again. But this, here we go. This is a good test for Heritage because we all know Edison's really good. It's a huge Orange County school, one of the biggest yeah. districts in America. Taking on a small school out near, what is it, the Inland Empire yeah, somewhere? Yeah, I mean, I, right. I mean, that's... Way out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> All right, move on. Let's continue on. Take a look at the uh, Division Four. There you see Paramount, Camarillo, Palos Verdes, San Juan Hills. Paramount number one seed. All those schools are good. Camarillo's only loss was to Grace Brethren, who was in Division two, uh, uh, Three, I believe. Right. Uh, got Palos Verdes, San Juan Hills. Loyola <clears throat> versus Palos Verdes, Bob, is an interesting first round matchup. Matchup. Loyola has had their problems of late. They haven't been able to get back to that formula they had when they dominated in the 60s and 70s and partially the 80s. And, you know, Palos Verdes is favored big time in this one, Bob. Yeah, a rumor going around online that Loyola may be dropping out of their league and then moving into a lower a lower spot. Unbelievable, uh, we'll Bob. We'll, These guys used to play for right. national championships, we'll, we'll see man. If that, we'll see if that happens or not. But you're right, uh, another interesting Match up. It's, it's a long climb for Loyola, but that's another kind of interesting grouping at the top there. That, exactly. Those Moving top on. Four seeds. Division five. There you see, real quick uh, Culver City, Oxnard, Glendora, Yorba Belinda. Again, a nice mix. Yorba Belinda, way out in Orange County. Oxnard out in Ventura. Culver City out by the beach on the west side. And then Glendora up in the San Gabriel Valley. This is as wide a swath as you could get. Key first round matchup Chino Hills, Mayfair. Both teams are five and five. Chino Hills is the league champion. Excuse me, Mayfair is the league champ of the Suburban League. Chino Hills comes in as a third place entry. This this is a coin flip. This is one of those coin flip games. Well, don't forget Chino Hills. I mean, uh, I just know the a Cowboys are good. Ago, man, Chino mm -hmm. Hills had all kinds of things going on. Uh, don't forget their head coach Chris Stevens and their athletic director uh, Sam Sabera both had to resign. Yep. Uh, over some, uh, they called it teasing allegations, hazing, teasing. I don't know what it was, but the head coach and the AD they said. You got to go, and uh, Michael Terry is now the interim head coach over at Chino Hills. And they've kind of rallied around it now, right? They're kind of using it. The Huskies are kind of using this as a little chip on their shoulder uh, and playing uh, this one out for their head coach now. So we'll see if that counts for anything. But, boy, what, uh, what turmoil over at Chino Hills. You know, a, a really good program over the years. So let's put up the graphic real quick once again with uh, Chino Hills uh, uh, taking on Mayfair. Mm -hmm. And all I got to tell you, these two teams are 5-5. Five and five. But I got to tell you, Bob, these guys played a killer uh, Chino Hills Mayfair uh, schedule. Uh, 34 and 14, or 34 and 16 is the records of the pre league. Wow. This isn't your league, this is preseason. Right. So Mayfair had a, you know, the teams had a winning percentage of six, almost 70, you know, 70%. And uh, Chino Hills was better. 38 and 12 was the records of their first five opponents. So. They've both played really good teams. What I think um, Chino Hills is a winning percentage of their first four, uh, first five games of the teams that, where they are now. Well, I mean, is that 75%? So this is a killer game for both schools. It shows you they're battle tested too, right? Oh yeah. Both, both, both schools battle tested. I tell you who I like here a little bit uh, is, is they I didn't like, play no sisters at the South. Bob. No, no, they certainly didn't. Thank you. Which is why you could see some upsets uh, in this division. I like Glendora though. I like Glendora as an outside shot to win that division. All right, let's take a look at the rest now. Division six, Ayala, Kaiser, Lucerna, Pacifica. Another big, nice grouping. Look at the records, 10-0, 10-0, 10-0, 9-1, Bob. Good good division. Let's go to division seven. Have a look at division number seven now. And uh, top four seeds, Serrano, Wilson of Long Beach, right. Temecula Valley at Cypress. Again, we got a million miles from one end to the other on this thing right. and encompassing everything in between. Uh, we'll see what happens, but Long Beach Wilson has like 5,000 students in it. 
And you got uh, Serrano probably has about maybe 1,200. Well, Wilson gave a poly run for best school in Long Beach this year, right? Yeah, they did. Milliken had a decent year, too, but uh, this is so another goes one. So the more league, Bob. Look at Cypress at 10-0, and 0, the yeah. fourth seed here. I know. They got it going on. Let's keep going. Division 8. Top four seeds include Sunny Hills, Santa Barbara, Palmdale, and San Gregorio. Sunny Hills getting a number one seed in any playoff format is just <laughs> inconceivable. Unbelievable how the football gods have shined the light on Sunny Hills. But, Bob, that school has, hasn't had good football teams for a long time. But just in the last four or five, actually about the last five or six years, actually when Caffrey right. Uh, towards the end of his regime, got it going on, but they've really got it smoking now, Bob. And you talk about a grouping. Look at look 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 at the geographics here. Yeah, From Palmdale to Santa Barbara yeah. to Fullerton. <laughs> this, San Gregorio is out in the Inland Empire yeah, somewhere. San Gregorio is about five thousand miles field on too. it. This is the moon. This is the dark side of the moon it here. It really is. I got to oh, tell you're you, right. D8 is the dark side of the moon. That's a great way to put Division it. Division nine. Let's go. Let's go. Let's just flip it now. Division nine. The top four seeds include Foothill, Santa Ana, uh, Highland. In Palmdale, you got Monrovia and Palm Springs. Palm Bob, Springs another there. dark side of the moon type of situation. I just like nobody foot. knows anybody. Nobody knows anything. Let's just play. And that's what's fun, right? It's the film. Yep. I like Foothill here because the defense they're playing. Division ten, Crescent Valley North of Vista, JW North, and your boys at Segerstrom. Boy, Segerstrom yeah. and all that stuff going on I over there, Bob. It. And they they fought through it. Look I don't want to talk about that they racial stuff that's been going on, Bob. I don't want to get into any of that nah, stuff. Let's just pass it by. I don't even know why certain people promote that crap in their in their publications. Uh, Beaumont, Marina, El Rancho, and Muir. Uh, look at that, Bob. Everybody's got a loss or two. Um, all over the place again. Orange County, L.A. County. You got Pasadena in there and Beaumont. Way out in the Inland Empire, right. Bob, near Palm Springs. Three, two lost teams right there in that division. <laughs> division 12. Take a quick look here. Uh, El Monte, Oak Park, Moreno Valley, Rio Hondo Prep. El Monte... Probably should run away with this, Bob. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, they probably should. Ocean View, by the way, is playing Almani right. as one of the key games. And I got to give a shout out to Luis Nunez, the head coach over at uh, Ocean View. You know, this guy's kind of like the Palma at, at Catella, how they always had mm -hmm. a lot of problems, couldn't win, couldn't win. Well, Nunez has probably been there about seven or eight years now, and then he's back to back playoff teams now. Right. He's back in the playoffs again, the third time in his tenure there. So, really doing some good stuff. And uh, we'll see how, how it mets Same out. They're going to have a tough first round game, though. This is the second really good year in a row here for El Monte. Yes. Uh, and I think they can uh, get it over the top. Your boys at Alhambra, Alhambra Inglewood, Fillmore, Ramona. I don't know, man. I don't know if Alhambra could take, can play with Inglewood. I don't know about Ramona or Fillmore, but Inglewood's going to be tough. All right, continue on. Last division, have a quick look. Here you go, Bob. St. Pius. Man, that's, you know, they just reopened up that school. Bob, they're already right. dominating. Look at them, 9 0. They ran the. They ran the uh, the table there. Sierra Vista. Yeah, Portola. We know what been, yeah, Vista what Del Lago. Doing. Vista Del Lago. Where is that? It's uh, it's over there by Vista. That's the first school we've had come up here. But I have no idea where they're at. All right. Good Sorry, job. Vista Del Lago. Send us an email. Send us a tweet. Let I know St. Pius is in Downey Give somewhere. Us that I know. That I know. <laughs> Vista Del Lago. Sorry. All right. Real quick, let's go out to Carlos Payne to see what's going on. What's up, Carlos? Hi folks, welcome to SoCal Prep Report. I'm Carlos Pena and I'm bringing you updates from the high desert. Starting off with Cross Valley League, we have Riverside Prep 17, Silver Valley 14. Now Riverside Prep's looking to take on Sierra Vista next week in first round of playoffs. Next up, Big Bear 62, Excelsior 8. Big Bear also moving on to first round playoffs taking on Eisenhower. Moving on to the Golden League and Highland overnight 41-6. Now Highland moving on to Division 9 playoffs is looking to take on Bonita next week. Next up, Antelope Valley 38, Little Rock 0. Moving on and East Side 48 over Lancaster 8. And finally, the long awaited battle between Palmdale and Quartz Hill. 31-21 there. Moving on to Desert Sky League and Granite Hills 53 over Victor Valley 15. And finally, the much awaited battle for 395 put Adelanto over Silverado. Now, the Saints' victory was historic because it was the program's first ever victory over Silverado, which had won three consecutive league titles. But most important, Adelanto's first league championship. Now, Silverado moves on to Division 6, taking on Citrus Valley. The defending Division 12 champions, Adelanto, take on Ontario and have their sights locked in on another championship. And finally, Serrano, perfect 10-0 season over Sultana, 70-17. In Division 7, Serrano sitting up top looking to take on Canyon. Hesperia 27 over Burroughs 14. And Apple Valley tops Oak Hills 41-21. Oak Hills next week faces Aquinas in Division 5 playoffs. 
and Apple Valley moving on to Division 6, taking on San Jacinto. And folks, those are the quick updates from the high desert. Back to you in the studio. All right, Carlos, thanks a bunch, man. Real quick, let's take out the national top 10. We probably won't look this for a while now. Uh, Modern day Bosco still retain the top two suits, followed by St. Louis, uh, St. Francis Academy, St. Thomas Aquinas. I don't know why Duncanville's in here, but man, that's what they all Get want. Them out there. Lakeland, Florida, the cell from up north. Lounge from Georgia and Bishop Gorman, Bob, the school everybody loves to hate, my brother. <laughs> Except us. We are no, we fine Gorman, with Bishop right? Gorman. All right? Good with them. So now, uh, last <laughs> week when we left you, uh, Randy was bound and determined to get Narbonne in the championship game, especially <laughs> at the state level. And Randy, what happened? What happened to Narbonne, my brother? They I noticed they weren't the even in the top undefeated. ten. <laughs> it's undefeated. Yes. Yeah. They're unbeaten. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 they're yeah, right. They went from unbeaten to winless. <laughs> well, yeah. it's just it's all perspective, <laughs> right? They're undefeated. That's the way I look at it. As you know, the decision finally came down the day they were supposed to play that night, and they were banned from this year's postseason. An eligible player for last year and this year, they lost a lot of stuff. 2018 championship taken away. Not eligible 2019. Not eligible to go to the playoffs in 2020. And they're on probation, so they're going to have to play nice through the 22-23 season. So in essence, the Narbonne program is gone. But it was a tremendous run, really one of the great runs in the history of the L.A. City section. On the field, five straight city titles. That's the second most ever in succession. And it would have been six this year. And the way I look at it, gentlemen, it was an undefeated season. Well, well, wait a minute now. Go ahead. <laughs> this is Belichick, right? This is the New England Patriots of the city section, right? That is they correct. did cheat. They did cheat, and they probably cheated a lot more than what they – they can only go back, I guess, two years and strip them. I would strip them of everything, Bob. Anything I could prove, well, I would strip them all. Look, the, All the titles, all the league championships, everything. They went around and they checked the, uh, the residences, right. and with the residences the kids said they were at, apparently they weren't at. There was yeah, a couple that didn't even exist from yeah. what I heard. Now, 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 somebody brought up a good point uh, on social media. How many schools right now could pass that same thing? How many Southern Section schools mm -hmm. could, could pass that, that litmus test? I think right a now? lot more yeah, could pass it than could have passed it a while back before the transfer rules were, re were relaxed to where anybody could go anywhere whenever they want. But you've got to sit out half the season. I think it's a lot. there's a lot less cheating going on like that. But some of these guys can't wait half the season. they got to win now. Got those big games now. League's nothing. That's what happened. They well, got too greedy. Don't forget the private schools aren't really under that same they didn't umbrella, want to wait. Though, aren't they? Because you could be from anywhere and pay your way into a private I've school. I've lost control of the city section. <laughs> yeah, you have. <laughs> we're, and, and we're, we're discussing how all this makes but sense. But you know what, but though? Please. You could transfer anywhere. You could be not even it's, transfer. Uh, Your freshman year, you can enroll yeah. in any high school anywhere. It's true. And they got to take you. But once you transfer out, if you play the sport, you got to sit out half the year. Now, there's a lot of junior players. And again, it's a senior late Narbonne team, but there's some junior players. Namely, Jake Garcia, their quarterback, on his way to USC. At least he's committed to SC. A lot of schools are going to want some of those Narbonne leftovers oh, you after this <laughs> probation has gone down. Narbonne I can leftovers. think of two schools who are going to have a quarterback opening. That's it. At the St. End of John year. Bosco <laughs> and Modern Day certainly would love Garcia. What, what <laughs> translation? Randy's saying there's going to be a bidding war. That's what's going to happen. So, anyway, it was a great run. I know they came down on him. But let's look at what Narbonne accomplished on the field, and it was some fabulous stuff. Speaking of great stuff, how about Garfield? This mm. is the East L.A. Classic we're talking about. Yes, indeed. Ten years in a row now, they Amazing. have beaten their Roosevelt yeah. rival. This time, 25 nothing. I told you on the show last week, they would cover the computer spread of 21. They really shut them down. They have a, a tremendous running back in P.J. Garcia. He scored two touchdowns in this game. He has 21 touchdowns on the year. Garfield's going to go into our open division. We'll talk more about the open division next week because they're off. Yeah, for everybody's off. Right. The one thing about Narbonne out, now that open division, any one of the eight, maybe with the exception of Carson who gets in because Narbonne's out out of the Marine League, can win that open division. So let's, let's go to the brackets. Let's take a By look at means. Division One, where there's some good football to be played. Eagle Rock's the number one seed. Shouldn't have any problems with Silmar. Axel Ayers is an outstanding quarterback for Eagle Rock. Andy Moran's a terrific coach. Me, as I look at this, the matchups that are intriguing are Lita and Westchester. Westchester's the favorite. Barlita's got a great running back in James Ochoa, over 1,500 yards, 23 touchdowns. 
They went 5-0 and in the East Valley League, and uh, they went overall 8-1. and That's a very good Arlita team. Another intriguing game is Cleveland and Roosevelt. Both teams will be exclusively on the ground. I kind of like Roosevelt there coming up after the loss. Mm -hmm. But Cleveland, who started fast early in the year, had a win against Palisades. Now let's go ahead, take a look at Division Two. There's unquestionably a favorite here in Franklin. Uh, they have a terrific offense. They open against Verdugo Hills out of the East Valley. That shouldn't be a problem at all. I do like the matchup with Hamilton and Jefferson. Jefferson should advance. They're one of the top four seeds. You look on the other side of the bracket, Fremont Canoga Park. Fremont's greatly improved. Canoga Park's the number two seed, really good football team. The other two seeds are Manual Arts and Jefferson in D2. Division three in the LA City section. I love these when you look at the brackets. The top seed is Marquez. Gladiators went 10 and 0 this year. Didn't have a game closer than 25 points. They are a terrific team. They open up against Rivera, who they started the season against and beat 43 nothing. They oh. really put it on the Huskies. That uh, looks good for this uh, match rematch. Then, great game, huh? Right. Game yeah. of the week right there. I don't, I don't there. think it's a great game, really. Gardena <laughs> is the number two seed. They were great early in the year, went into the Marine League and had some issues. Lincoln is the number three team. They lost to Eagle Rock, mm. but they're a very good football team. And the number four seed is Washington, coached by Paul Knox, who won all those championships at Dorsey, has done a tremendous job turning Washington around. They open up against Los Angeles. Got to like uh, Washington prepping that one. The other note I have I want to talk about is in girls volleyball. Because here's Cleveland again. Remember mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago I said they finally upset Granada Hills. They hadn't beaten them in over a decade. They lost 25 straight matches. Yep. Now they go into the open division first round. I know. They play top ranked Taft. Yes, they did. Taft had beaten them like a, you know, a drum the whole right. season, right? Not this time. They swept them. <laughs> Cleveland swept them, one of the great upsets in girls volleyball in the L.A. City section in the opening round, 3-0. That's a great job by the Cleveland Cavalier ladies to win that match against I, Taft. I saw that on Twitter. I saw a little bit of that uh, celebration. Uh, somebody put that up there. I thought, wow, what a, what a, what a great time for those young ladies. To, yeah, uh, Jeff Laidlaw does a tremendous job. He does the coaching for both the boys and the girls volleyball teams at Cleveland. And that's a great win. I don't know if who's going to win the city championship now. It's open. Palisades is back in the hunt. Eagle Rock's the top seed left. Bob Granada Hills is always dangerous. Bob thinks he knows, but don't say Bob. Oh, I'm please. not saying right now. Uh, hey, I would go with I, Eagle, I Eagle Rock. Favorite. I All like right. Eagle Rock to win it. Hey, real quick, guys. Okay. In Plainfield, New York, real quick, that story we talked about the other night. Uh, I didn't know they had a, 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 I don't know, a scoring, uh, a scoring penalty. If you score too many yeah, points in a high school football what's game, they that? suspend That's you for a weird, game. What a weird story. What the hell's going on out there, buddy? It was buddy? only like, what, 63 points? 63 to like 21 or 14. A, Dude, that's a close game. I mean, what are you talking about suspending I, I, a coach for that? That's what happens when you got too many soccer moms getting out there and making rules for football politics, teams. Politics, politics, politics. It's ridiculous. Uh, oh, by yeah. the way, that reminds me when you say the points. I got to say this. Birmingham went through the West Valley in football in the city section. Four straight shutouts, 202 to nothing. They outscored their opponents. Cumberland. Birmingham. In a <laughs> couple of weeks, College. look for Birmingham. All, right. All five of the wins this year, shutouts. All oh. right. All right. On behalf of everybody, I'm Richard Stray saying so long from your friends here at the SoCal Prep Report. You guys, we're out of time. You guys talk a lot. Good night, everybody. Narbonne should still be ranked.